I've reached a major milestone in the development of Platform Masters. What is that milestone? This. I can finally, truly make use of this and totally edit every single terrain. I can make it pretty much exactly as what the game will eventually end up being, having. Of course, I won't be able to do that for every single world, though, but hey. However, things are a little bit different. Like, for example, select this, and here's these uh, digits here. Hmm. I'll get to that a little bit later. When you see an icon like this, there's a set of predefined values, or at least a list of them, anyway. Just to show you what I mean, and here's another one of these. Now, what are these digits all about? This is numerical input. Anytime you see a calculator icon after an option, that means there's numerical input present. Hmm, so what does that mean? Well, uh, let's see here. I'll demonstrate here. Okay, notice the mini-map here and see what it looks like. It looks kind of funny with these odd spots here, but hey. Notice the zoom here, the 132? Okay, I'm going to change that. Now, to get an idea on what effect the various things, these various values and stuff have, first, consider reading the menu help. I try to explain it in plain English as best as I can. Okay? And once you get an idea on what that is, then of course you can probably choose some of the various values here, like I'm going to pick this just for the fun of it. Okay? I notice how this looks different. This way, by changing options, you can actually see what effect that has. And you can just fiddle around with it really as much as necessary. Okay, and here, 1, 8, you really can't see anything, but look down and, yeah, something's different. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, now I'm going to return this back to its original state. See, this is the 32. Okay, now I'm going to use a custom value. The yeah, calculator icon means there's numerical input. So, how do you use numerical input? Easy. First, choose the option that you want um, that has the numerical input. You'll notice that this digit here blinks, the very far right digit. Now, to change the digits, just press up and down accordingly. Okay? And to move between digits, left and right. Like, for example, you see how that one changes? And I go to this one. Of course, each value does have limits, like this, for example, which is pretty much a clone of this. And, of course, there's also a lower limit, even less than that. And sometimes, quite often, custom options will go, can go beyond the, the main list. However, what if you... After you get done fiddling around with the numbers and stuff, and you finally decide on what you want, how do you select it? Easy. Press Enter. Notice that this changed here? This was 32, now it's 48. Let's go look at it in the terrain. Hey, that is different. 48, huh? Very interesting. And that's basically how numerical input works. And of course, if you want to make some other adjustments, uh, let's see here. I'll pick 112. Yep, and it's changed yet again. That's basically all there is to numerical input. Of course, I'm going to return that to its default. Now I want to show you what how the editing and the terrain and stuff works. Yep, bounce. Hmm, looks like I got a hole here. So that's what those odd spots are. However, if I were to go into editing the terrain, you'll see... Slope. No. Hmm. Well, that's basically what it is. Null basically means it's unmodified. I haven't messed with it. You might be noticing here, no ground here. Hmm. So what's the difference between those two? And of course, if you go way off over here, you'll see a lot of null. That's because it hasn't been modified or anything. But, let's see here. Okay. That was odd. Yep. Null basically means it copies the, whatever this one here is, the height and the slope, or at least it's, the slope is copied. So that way when I go to editing, I can fine-tune it. However, I've changed some of the movement mechanics and stuff, too. 
like, okay, I'm going to hold left and right on this level terrain, okay? Nothing special. Notice how fast he accelerates. Now I'm going to get up onto this slope. Boy, that is slow acceleration. Whoa, that is fast. And hey, even if one passes 24 mile an hour limit. And of course, when you jump, okay, notice this, okay. That's how this here is his jumping speed. That's in coordinate units per frame. That's the game's back end units. Okay, now I'm going to jump while going up the slope. What do you suppose is going to happen? Hmm. That's odd. The Y speed's higher and the X speed also changed. That's actually what I'm expecting. He jumps higher. Now, of course, with even more speed, like, for example, I'm going to jump at the top of here. Jump. Wow, that is considerably faster. Okay. Notice how high he jumped there. Okay. Remember that. Now look how high he jumps. Hmm. That's what effect slopes have. And of course, it's not running up slopes. If you run down a slope, what's going to happen? Jump. Hmm. Okay, so he's not jumping as high, but he's got a whole bunch more on the horizontal speed. That's basically how you manage slopes. you got to be careful, though. And of course, you might be thinking, bounce. Okay, so he's not bouncing. That's because it only happens when you impact at 100 mile an hour. Okay, I'll demonstrate. Okay, he's going up, right? Hit the slope, and now he's he's bounced. Now he's going to hit this. He bounces again. Okay, that is what I'm expecting to see. Now, he really get fast. Watch the pit. And now I'm going to bounce on this slope right here. What do you suppose is going to happen? Hmm. Okay, lots and lots of speed, right? Okay, now, notice these numbers here, okay? Hmm, that's strange. And he's going off at a screwball angle, too. It actually took me a long time to figure out that how to do that. But hey, the rewards are well worth it. Now, of course, these debug test values actually show me what the various stats are in terms of the bounces and stuff. Okay, I'll demonstrate. Okay, notice that his speed is about 40-something. Okay, nothing special there. Okay, I'm going to get a little horizontal speed. Notice that these numbers are a little different. This here is actually the basis for the, the bounce. Okay, now I'm going to really, really get up much faster. Okay, nothing special there. Not quite fast enough, apparently. Ooh. Okay, he's got a lot of speed. Uh, but he didn't bounce. That's because bounce is actually based on the direct impact on that. So if you're going really parallel with the slope and you've got like 600 mile an hour even, there's still a chance you won't bounce. That's the tricky thing about bounce. See there, he also had that. Of course, there are some kind of silly things I can do too. Uh, let's see here. Like... Notice he double bounced there? Yep, he bounces around like that. And yep, I finally worked that system out. That's just one of the requirements that I needed to get in. And of course, when you... Eventually, that area to the left is actually just a testing area. But this is kind of what the terrain would... Might look like in the end. Although this world doesn't have it this hilly. But it does give you the idea on what the actual scene and stuff look like. Of course, he bounced on a level slope there. Now, you might be wondering, what is this all about? Okay, well, I'm going to adjust this. Let's see here. I'm going to make it 32. The Okay, so the terrain shifted. Everything's 32 higher. That's one of the main things that I needed for the terrain map, terrain generator, and that's why I needed the numerical input all added in. And of course, remember this had no ground, right? 
Oh no. Yep, it's a pit. Nothing happens with no. Now, I'm going to edit the terrain a little bit. Hmm, so what do you basically happen? Well, you're probably familiar with this from before, right? That's bulk cloning right there, and I just cloned the previous known slope. Of course, there's actually 75 or 73, yeah, there's 73 different steepnesses for slopes, like this, for example. Look how steep that is. From the world, you won't be seeing anything steeper than this slope right here until you get to world 10. Of course, there's a lot of other possibilities. You might be noticing that it's kind of off. And yes, I do have a bug here, and I haven't been able to figure out why that's happening. It only happens when you're going on the down slope. And of course, all the downs are the same as well. But that's basically how the editing of the terrain works. Now, let's see. I know there's some other changes that I've made, just for reference. Hmm. Okay. Yep, Lake Kevin is quite a bit different. You might also be noticing that the water sure looks different from what I was planning on in that previous video. Well, that's because I did some little bit of extra research and, well, of course, normally, this close part of the water would actually be uh, opaque, and you're also supposed to see that same texture below the water, but I haven't added that functionality in just yet. And, of course, managing all this terrain and stuff. Pit. Of course, normally, the pit you're... Yep, can't go down pits, but null is otherwise fine. Gotta get over here and get some horizontal speed like crazy. And no, I haven't added the water mechanics yet, yet either. But it does kind of give you an idea on what the overall scene and stuff look like. I just wanted to show you that. And of course, you might be thinking, now, all the terrains are otherwise going to be identical, right? Okay, well... You remember where all the null and stuff were and run east of plains and the such, those two pits and the such as well, right? This was this was null right here. I'm gonna reload run east of plains. Hmm, that null isn't there anymore. Back to Lake Kevron. And hey. Yep, every world has different terrain maps. It may not seem like it with this platform level, but this is my test level and I haven't gotten to the point where I actually make the test levels, or the levels and stuff either. But it at least does give you the idea on what kind of progress I've, and stuff I've got to do yet, if you know what I mean. Yep, all these complex angle calculations and stuff, just to finally get all the slopes and, and the related all added in. But that's basically all there is to editing the terrain, but I'm just going to be adjusting this a little bit just to demonstrate how I manipulate the terrain. Notice how I use the where it says the height on the left and the height on the right. I use this to determine where things are. Now, of course, if I want to bulk clone things, I just go a few steps further out. Notice how the cursor keeps changing in height and the such each time. I move it. Well, that's actually to gauge where it's going to end up being, like for example here. But what if I did not like that position? I can either press N to mark a point to start for nullifying it, or I can also I'm gonna clone that again. I can also press backspace. Oh, uh, that's odd. Oh, yeah, that's expected. That's because normally your all the blank ones are supposed to be way below or you're otherwise not supposed to get to. Uh, let's see here. Because normally, I'm going to nullify these. Well, 
let's see, that's really, really, really steep. Of course, it doesn't work on the vertical, so I need to fix that. But you can see right there that it actually goes off the edge of the terrain and stuff, right? Okay, I'm just going to do that and say how the terrain map adjusts accordingly. Okay, exit debug menu, and now I'm going to go off and test that. Yep, running downhill, you can sure get fast. Of course, you do got to watch it with slopes and the such. Normally, you'd otherwise have a blank spot there. Yeah, let's see here. Of course, when it do actually does go below like that, Okay, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete Hmm, okay, that wasn't what I was expecting Okay, no ground here Yeah, I need to fix that in my programming somewhere and yeah, I got that strange bug that I've yet to figure out. Of course, if I want to get the character over to where I really need him, like for example, I'm going to move him right here. What I do is I edit terrain, choose move character, back, back, and he's right there. That's all I got to do to, so that way it's easier to test as needed. Yep, I've got a few bugs that really need to get fixed. But anyway, this video was created by Alalilia. Thank you for watching.